So what does issue two do? Issue two, separate issue on the ballot this year, was put on the ballot by the legislature. Two ways something can get on the ballot for a constitutional amendment. It can come from citizens through the process responsible Ohio used, or it can come from the legislature by a vote of the legislature to put something on the ballot. And so they put this on the ballot um, primarily in response to issue three. I mean, there's, it would not have happened if issue three didn't come forward. But this kind of language on the ballot is something that exists in 19 other states that basically protects state constitutions from being hijacked by folks with a lot of money that want to put a specific um, issue on for their own benefit. So what does, it do? what does it do? It prohibits a petitioner, that's the folks who sort of say, I want to put something on the ballot, from doing anything in the Constitution that will grant a monopoly, oligopoly, or cartel um, that creates exclusive financial benefit for them like 10 farmers out of 70,000 being able to farm marijuana to the exclusion of everybody else. Prohibits any petitioner from using the Ohio Constitution to grant a commercial interest right that some other similarly situated group can't have. Um, and it requires the ballot board, so when ballot issues come forward, there's an Ohio ballot board that decides on the language and the issue numbers and all that kind of stuff. It requires them to look at each petition, ensure it doesn't meet these requirements or prohibitions, and if it does, the ballot board would move forward with the issue but they'd have to sort of change the way in which you approach it, which I'll explain in a minute. Finally, um, it specifically says that any ballot, um, any constitutional amendment appearing on the November 3rd ballot next Tuesday that um, creates a monopoly, oligopoly, or cartel, 10 farmers, um, for the sale or distribution of any other use of any federal schedule one controlled substance, marijuana, would not take effect. So it's very clear about if you vote for issue two, issue two uh, wins, that it does not, it allows, it, it basically prohibits issue three from taking effect. And it gives the Ohio Supreme Court the exclusive jurisdiction and any action around it. So what would happen is, if one of these issues came forward, let's say that um, we decided as a state, or we thought as a state, we wanted to have a water authority in the state. And we wanted to split the state into five regions that was responsible for managing water in the state. And we said that was a good use of public funds because it's in the public interest to manage water effectively in the state of Ohio. You might, that is a monopoly. It's, a, it's an oligopolistic stru structure. Can't say that word, sorry. But basically, we might say that's the right thing to do. So you'd have to answer two questions. Is it OK to proceed forward in violation of the Constitution with this issue? The second question is, do you agree with this issue itself? So while you may agree that having a monopoly or an oligopoly for water management is the right thing, you might not like the way the issue is presenting it. And so you could vote yes, 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 no, no, yes, et cetera. So basically, if both questions are answered yes, it goes into law. If one of those two questions is answered no, it does not go into law. The folks who are supportive of issue two, including us, say this is an important and appropriate protection for our Constitution. One of the things that you will see if you haven't already, and if you haven't already, God bless you, you don't watch television, but there's a, a whole rash of ads going on right now. You can't turn the TV on without ads. I think there's $5 million of ads this week on issue, in support of issue three. Um, starting, one of my favorites is Nick Lachey, you know, that, you know, great pop star getting up there, smiling, saying, I love Ohio, et cetera. Nick is one of the investors in Responsible Ohio. And basically, that entire ad runs without, I think, using the word marijuana at all. So the amount of money they have to sort of put this issue forward and put a good face on it is one of the things that we have concerns, just people don't know actually what they're going to be voting for exactly here. And so by hijacking this process with money, to create amendments to the Constitution that give these special rights. We think that's a bad thing. And like I said, I think 19 other states have also created language that keeps their Constitution safe from these kinds of approaches. The folks against this say this is the legislature overstepping. They're going to continue to sort of take advantage of this and get in the way of your rights and as a person to put something on the ballot. Um, and I think what we're trying to do is make sure the Constitution isn't becoming a vehicle for these special interests. In 1912, when this process was created, there wasn't the internet. There wasn't the kind of money chasing politics like there is today. Uh, there wasn't the ability to organize in the same ways. You had to put a significant effort forth to get people to agree to a constitutional amendment. It's a lot easier today to turn people out and to use money to drive these things. So we think this is an appropriate um, protection, and it's not, it's not uh, you know, it's something that can be managed. The two-question process is not an unreasonable process to make things happen going forward. 